Here comes the farmer with his gun, gun, gun. It's Gareth Wynne-Jones on a farm shoot in Herefordshire. That's what I love about shooting. It's like being on your first date. You never know what's going to turn up. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Essex, Robert Bucknell is patrolling his farmyard with a 410 looking for rats. We have more on farming with the launch of a new show, Farming Britain. Details later. And hunting bans. Do they actually help wildlife? I join a group of people in Somerset who say they don't. David has the news on the news stump, while James brings you the best YouTube hunting films in this week's Hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Nice. Since we do most of our filming on farms, it will come as no surprise that a lot of farmers enjoy their shooting. So cartridges in, and if they come past you, loose them cartridges off. Will do, mate. Looking forward to it. Today we're in Hereford on a small family farm shoot as guest of Dave and Mike Edwards. They've known Welsh hill farmer and outspoken media personality Gareth Wynne-Jones for years and offered him a peg. Welcome you to Millwood Farm here for the shoot. We have got Dave here doing a little bit of filming with us and we've got Gareth here to see if we can film him shooting a pheasant. No ground game whatsoever. Make sure that we're shooting safely, that there is sky underneath birds. Our first drive is a small duck pond and Gareth is under instruction to bag a duck for his father. That's what I love about shooting. It's like being on your first date. You never know what's going to turn up. <laughs> That wasn't a good start. <laughs> the duck was there for the taking, but unfortunately, Mr. Wynne Jones Sr. will have to wait. Gareth has an excuse. Absolutely gutted. Should have nailed that duck. Ah, oh, my wrist's oh, killing me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, okay, let's take this bloody thing off. <laughs> you meant to shoot out? No, no, the first shot is always about conservation. <laughs> Okay. Hey, is that, is that to make yourself feel better? Yeah, that? yeah, <laughs> yeah. Can I give you one of those? I know that's got lead in. Oh, I thought you were nice. A quick drive up the lane to a neighbouring field and Gareth explains why this type of shoot is right up his street. Definitely more people than pheasants. Why aren't we teaching the next generation, bringing children from cities to understand how food's produced? And for me, that's the connection we've lost. We've lost that connection with seasonality, food production, hunting, fishing, because everything's in a supermarket, everything's in a plastic bag, and people don't really realise that everything starts either from the soil or from the sea. By giving these children good food, it's going to save the NHS hundreds of thousands of pounds. And if they're healthy and happy, and I just don't mean physically, Mental health is a massive thing as well. If you are not feeding your children right with all these sugars and additives, I think this is where the problem lies. We just got to get another two to go with him. That doesn't look like a pheasant or a duck to me, mate. He's a prime squirrel for you there. I might be going home with more food than I expected, actually. To go with the squirrel, we have a proper homegrown onion. That's a big onion. Am I taking that home with me? Yes, in your tummy. <laughs> Are you cooking that now for us? Yes. So it's going in the pie. Wow. We're did you want beef pie? Did you want a squid to go with it? Um, no, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Drive three, and at this point, we've shot more squirrels than pheasants. I've travelled nearly three hours for this. <laughs> Think of my carbon footprint. <laughs> I think I'll put me. And back in the bag. Move on to the next stand. Yeah, the next one. Listen, let's talk about the brownie. So, are you a browning man then? Yeah, shot with a browning all my life. Um, absolutely love them. I just think it's a, it's a great all-round gun. Um, I'm not into these posh, expensive guns. I'm just into something that works. Uh, it's just something that I feel fits me nicely. I usually hit everything with it, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but as well, 
don't know, I can I can put it in the back of the Land Rover, I can put it, you know, it's it's not a gun that I feel is too posh not to use every single day from, you know, going out, uh, shooting foxes, shooting, you know, rabbits at night with a lamp, and then we can go on a posh day with the old pheasants, so it's, yeah, it's a lovely all-rounder. What models have you had before? It's always been a uh, 525 sports. Um, I, I just, I don't know, it just comes up so nicely. And, you know, this is a little bit longer. I think it was 30 inch I had on the last one, and this is 32. And, yeah, I have been shooting well with it. <laughs> okay, Dave, now, Continuity, what I will do, thanks Aaron, you can carry on now mate, we've had the bird. <laughs> <laughs> so your last shoot, what was the bag? Uh, so we were about 13 birds last time. Yeah. What did you shoot? Uh, so we had eight pheasants, three pigeon, and two woodcock. I've traveled nearly three hours, and I've had one shot at one duck, but it looks like we might get a few more after. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. Hey, doesn't matter. It's about the camaraderie and having That's a good day, point. isn't it? Yeah. That is the whole point. Try and put me in a better stand next time, <laughs> mate. <laughs> Drive four and the beaters come into view without a bird going over us. What happened, Mike? It's a low bird count, but it is wonderful know? to be invited as part of this day. Well, fingers crossed we get a few more through the woods. What's Not your name? Hiding. Pippa. Pippa. Do you enjoy going out? Yeah. Is it a good day? Yeah. Is Mummy watching after you? Yeah. And you'll have some sweeties after? Oh, she's got her pockets loaded already. Ah, well done. Lovely to meet you. <laughs> the sense of community extends to the way the locals look after the birds after the season. So we leave these out here all summer. Fair play. And we fill, fill them up about once, well, I say twice a month. Yeah. And we have people come around, they bring their dogs out for a walk, and just, they take the lid off and just brush Push. them around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that just keeps the wildlife going all the while. Yeah, yeah it helps and the little birds, doesn't all it? All the little birds, because, you know, you get to the end of the shooting, take the food away from them, and then yeah. poor buggers starve because there isn't anything there for them. Yeah. And then I've done the special wet day feeders, which are the IBCs. I know, I've seen them. <laughs> put, some, put some straw in there and hand feed into them. Yeah, and that works well. It's working well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We just we've got an abundance of them, but we thought well, just we'll use them for something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hey, look, adding value to the product. Yeah. So where are we going now? The other side there. That side. Okay. Drive five, and Gareth claims he makes contact with the pheasant. No, definitely hit that. Hundred percent. That's it. Hundred percent. That was it with the first shot. <laughs> Put a dog on that, it's hit! He even gets Mike to have a look, but we need to be careful as this is where the last drive takes place, so we leave it and head back for coffee. Hey, they've got beavers up in Scotland. You should get a couple of beavers in here. Mike loose some beavers out in Worcestershire now. Are they? Yeah. The drives keep coming and the beaters are working their socks off as the terrain gets steeper. Squirrels are back go on the menu on Drive 7 and on go Drive go 8. Go go go. It's been one of them days. <laughs> I've never been shooting squirrels on a pheasant day, I tell you. Yeah, it's a bit of fun, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Drive 9, and this could be the banker, no. the one where everyone comes away with a smile. There he goes. And again. <laughs> A bird's still going. I think have they got Ke Kevlar vests on these birds? Like, they got what vests on? Kevlar vests on. Jesus. Oh, that's, they've only got about six birds here. They, they're, they're all super pheasants. Yeah. They're going. Am I, am I starting to lose my mind? Gareth does get some shooting on this one. Wow. <laughs> Oh, that is a third and a half. Fair play.
Browning's on it. Woodcock. Oh, I think it was behind it. Hey, at least I'm having a bit of shooting. That wasn't bad. Three birds. I look at the little kids coming with the pheasants. Uh, I just love it. That's what a real shoot's about. Harvesting their own food, understanding. Those people have worked hard today, Gareth. Oh, can I tell you? And the kids, everybody have worked their cotton socks off. That's what it's about. And it's been a really good day. Look, the bag's not massive, but we've had fun. We've taken a few squirrels out of the equation. I'm not sure if there'll be more squirrels than uh, pheasants, but do you know what? It's been a great day. It hasn't rained. Everybody's enjoyed it. Good food, good company, good day shooting. Living the dream. Uh, it's here. You can watch Gareth being outspoken on YouTube, Facebook and Instagram. And you can find out more about Brownings at browning.eu. Thanks, Gareth. And Gareth presents the first episode of Farming Britain, which comes out at exactly the same time as this show. It has a dairy farmer's battle with bureaucracy and badgers. It's basically cost us 30 to 35,000 pound a month. It has Andy Crow looking at golden tractors, and it has Gareth charging around the mountains of Wales, gathering in the Carnithai ponies. Uh, our obvious Welshman David put that in on purpose. Click on the link in the description below and coming up on screen now. Another show you can watch is this week's Field Sports Extra. In it, we have a London journalist, a squirrel on a feeder, and that Welsh farmer again. We're seeing a good amount of grouse coming back. Plus more from that journalist later in this show. Also in Field Sports Extra, we are giving away a knife and sharpener set donated by Rifleman Firearms and a spy point trail cam worth hundreds donated by Vale Field and Game in Leicestershire. Links to both of those below. Easiest way to win is to watch Field Sports Extra, which goes out the night before this show. Only to Field Sports members. Easiest way to watch Field Sports Extra is to join those members. The Field Sports Nation will send you a goodie box. Link below. Next up, back to Field Sports Britain and from people scratching a living from the bare earth to just scratching. It's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. An RSPB warden has been accused of killing a great skewer by stepping on it. The incident shown in this video is thought to have taken place in August 2022 on Cockett Island off the Northumberland coast, where there is an RSPB reserve. The man in the video is believed to be an RSPB warden. The man, who was acting at a time of a bird flu outbreak, appears to be ignoring death for instructions that sick or injured birds should not be approached and that full PPE has to be worn. We've contacted the RSPB and are waiting for their response. The Metropolitan Police has turned down a complaint from a member of the public against Tony Blair. Recent allegations by a member of Blair's government, Lord Mandelson, that Labour accepted a £1 million donation from an organisation connected to the International Fund for Animal Welfare in return for a ban on fox hunting, could put the former Prime Minister on a charge of misconduct in public office. Ed Swales from Hunting Kind tried to make a complaint against Blair at a Met police station. He says officers refuse to accept it, log it for a crime number or pass it on through the chain of command. A group of 30 river keepers have managed to block Southern Water from dumping raw effluent into the River Test after a two-day vigil. Keepers from across Hampshire gathered in the village of Chilbolton after discovering temporary pipes have been laid to allow raw effluent to be pumped into the river. Southern Water say the operation was an emergency measure because of groundwater ingress into underground pipes. They've now abandoned plans to pump the water directly into the famous river and are using tankers to remove excess water instead. The alarm was raised by river test keeper Sam McMurray. We had we had 30 plus river keepers from the test and itch in chalk streams in Hampshire all rallied together. Luckily we talk on a big WhatsApp group and um, we managed to all come together and show our efforts to support our chalk streams, which are obviously our livelihood. But for now, you know, there was 18 sites that were going to be pumped full of effluent and that has dropped considerably since we've taken a stance. You can see all of Sam's interview in the link below. 
All the members of a Dorset hunt have been suspended after drone footage showed their hounds ripping apart a fox. This still image published in the Times shows what hunt saboteurs claim is a pack of hounds killing a fox while members of the Blackmore and Sparkford hunt look on. The British Hound Sports Association has confirmed they are awaiting the results of an investigation by Dorset Police into the incident before pursuing any further action. Hunters in Australia have won their battle to continue hunting ducks. Victoria's Labour government was expected to ban duck hunting after hearing recommendations from Australia's 2023 Game Bird Committee. Instead, it's allowed hunting to continue, with some changes to laws which are to be announced shortly. They're expected to introduce a nine-bird bag and a full-length hunting season. Thanks to Paul Sly and Glenn Faller for the story. The Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust is about to launch this year's Big Farmland Bird Count. This annual survey provides crucial data to help measure the state of Britain's bird life. Birds like this yellowhammer were among last year's stars, although starlings and wood pigeon were the most prolific. The survey starts next week. Details on how to join in, in the link below. The biggest gun show in the world is bigger than ever. The SHOT Show held in Las Vegas attracted around 50,000 visitors from more than 100 countries coming to see what the 2,500 exhibitors had to offer. There was even some UK companies exhibiting, including Spartan Precision, launching a new quad stick and bipod. And the biggest safari show in the world, Safari Club International Show in Nashville, Tennessee, is just beginning. And we'll have a full report from there next week. An angler fishing for barbel on a tributary of the River Thames has caught what's believed to be the first salmon in 200 years from the river. Hector Rodriguez recorded the safe release of his accidental catch on his mobile phone. The salmon grabbed a fly intended for barbel on a stretch of river in London. The fish appears to be a spawned out female, which may have migrated up the Thames feeder river to lay its eggs. Hector reported his capture to the Environment Agency. And finally, you've probably heard of Bambi on Ice. Well, how's this for a balletic performance from a muntjac deer at Rutland Water? This footage was captured by wildlife photographer Tony Marshall and posted on his Instagram. The deer definitely gets nine out of 10 for style. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now, Essex farmer Robert Bucknell has a rat problem in his farmyard. Happily, he has a 410. Essex farmer Robert Bucknell is having trouble with rats around his pheasant feeders. He's hatched a plan which involves a hush power 410 shotgun and a hike micro thermal sight. The army says time spent in reconnaissance is seldom wasted. So we're out here in daylight and we're going to go in and have a look round a feeder where the gamekeeper said he didn't shoot some rats last night and has left them for us for tonight. So we're going to find out where they're going to be hiding. So we have a rough idea where to park up because it's a bit parky tonight and we're going to be sitting in the motor in the warm and toasty. Yeah, there's holes all through here. The number of times you find where that run is, they'll come out and they'll sit there looking before they chance going to the feeder. Now that's going to be a good little spot. If we sit in the middle there, we've got a pretty good chance of catching them at fairly close range in either direction. Right, feeder's just in front of us. Uh... We'll sit here quietly. Mm. A little bit of luck. After five, ten minutes, then we'll be forming a queue. Well, last time when we did this, we used the blunderbuss, which was um, a bit too much. And uh, we've now taken the Hike Micro site off that very cheap and cheerful, but works, and put it onto a Hush Power 410. And it comes right back onto my eye absolutely perfectly. And being fully moderated 410, 
it is very quiet. Now that is pretty quiet, but if you use the old Chevrolet little babies at short range, you listen to this. Quieter. <laughs> Still kills rats. This is the, the Hike Micro Thunder, which is their cheapest scope. List price is about a thousand pounds, but you can pick them up for less than that. And at short range for ratting, absolutely brilliant. And I'm using a viewer to make certain what I'm shooting at. Quite easy sometimes, you've got the um, wood mice and they can look a bit like a young rat climbing around, but if you've got a good thermal viewer, you can have it turned right down, see what you're shooting at, identify it. And then this thing um, gives you a blob or a shape of rat. If the rat's out in the open, it's quite easy to see. And if they're hidden in, in things, then you just check with this, shoot with this, dead rat. Robert prefers shooting to poisoning, as it avoids the risk of secondary poisoning to predators, especially owls. Robert is happy with the results of his night's work, but he's not finished yet. He can't resist stopping off at another feeder on the way home. Right, let's see if I can get everything lined up. Like... For more about Hike Micro Thermal Scopes, go to hikemicrotech.com. Thanks, Robert. Now, if you are near North Cambridgeshire on Friday the 9th of February 2024 or Solihull on Thursday the 15th of February, we have two Field Sports Lives coming up. They are my chance to stand on the stage and tell you the story of Field Sports Channel, plus what we are planning to do next. They're a couple of hours long. They are free to Field Sports members and a tenor to viewers, which you get back if you join up on the night. Field Sports members just need to drop me an email to say that they and their guests are coming. Links for more details and to buy tickets below. There's a bit of a chat show involved too, with guests including Nicole Moore and Jim Barrington. Talking of Jim, I went to see him in Somerset, where he was promoting his book Rural Wrongs. We gather in Dulverton Town Hall on Exmoor for the local launch of the book Rural Wrongs. Charlie Pye Smith wrote the book with help from Jim Barrington, former head of the League Against Cruel Sports, with the welfare of hunted animals as its main subject. And it's pro hunting. We've looked at the Hunting Act. What did the 2004 Hunting Act do for the animals which, are, which were hunted? Red deer, fox and brown hare. And nobody else had done this. And the finding is it's been a disaster for all three species. So the Act has achieved the exact opposite of its intentions. It's made matters worse, not better, for the hunted species. The audience are local people. The Daily Telegraph has sent a reporter and a photographer. The locals here have had a London government tell them how to manage their deer for the last 20 years, and they don't like it. It started in the 1990s following a report by an academic called Professor Bateson. Hazel Cluley is here to represent the Vets for Hunting group Vorm. The Bateson um, report was, um, some might say, biased. 
Um, it, it, the Bateson report showed um, blood cortisol levels at the point of kill. Cortisol is a stress hormone um, and basically the parameters that he measured reflected um, a physiological state of stress. Bateson muddled the word stress in deer with distress and as a result the National Trust banned deer hunting with hounds on its land. A few years later, in 2004, Tony Blair restricted deer hunting to just two hounds, ironically prolonging the chase and increasing the stress in the deer. But stress doesn't really matter in deer, as Hazel explains. We all get stressed in our everyday life. This, this term stress is sort of banded about like it's ubiquitously bad. It's not. We need stress to, to make us perform. We need stress to survive. It's an adaptive thing. Chronic stress is when it starts to affect us negatively. Stress is distinct from distress, which infers a fearful state. Uh, physiological stress is an adaptive mechanism to cope with a stress the two do not necessarily have to exist together. There is a strong sense here that the moorland red deer belong to the people who live on Exmoor. Charles Harding had a 45-year career as a deer stalker, mainly at the Hunnicutt estate on Exmoor, which the Ackland family donated to the National Trust. Charles resigned from that job over the National Trust's management of deer. Uh, I've been on Exmoor all my life. I know all the farmers because I do pest control. I work for most of them. And it's having that, having that communication. Communication is the biggest um, thing with uh, deer stalking and deer management anyway. Definitely deer management. There's nothing more better to see than a, than a, a herd of stags grazing or lying about and twitching their ears in the summer. That's, that's what people like seeing. I like seeing, you know. The subject is not just about the animals, it's about people too. The panellists come back to the words communication and community over and over again. They fear that government is planning to sweep away hunting without thinking of the consequences for either the deer or the people of Exmoor. You can't just shoot deer on a small 200 acre farm and uh, think you're going to control your deer and have no damage. You'll end up probably with more damage because deer will be coming in at night and raiding your crops and they'll be long gone by the time they're legal to shoot an hour before sun, sunrise. I mean, I think I would say the cornerstone of, of all of our interests, and, and it's not just the hunting that we look at, it's all wildlife management, but it, it is um, you know, underpinned by welfare and preservation of, of welfare in animals. And, and as vets, that is what we are charged with um, being responsible for. So, so I, I think it's always from a welfare ang angle that we are concerned, and, and disease control as well, but obviously disease... Um, impacts welfare so um, yeah welfare is what we are mainly concerned with. We're very lucky with the Exmoor and District Deer Management Group you know all the, we, we have again major communication with all the people have meetings we do a deer count every year and there's probably 270 odd people out deer counting two mornings of the year it's a, a community thing and then we have a good meeting at the end and a, a drink or two and a pasty and everybody you know gets together and that's where you get get the, the feedback of what problems there are any government looking at this subject has to acknowledge that people on Exmoor who live alongside the deer don't want another university theory foisted on them as policy over thousands of years, country people have worked out how to manage the deer for the benefit of deer and people. Labour are threatening to tighten the hunting act, which for example would get rid of even trail hunting possibly. It's very important that they know how disastrous the act has been and how it will make matters even worse if they tighten it further. People are angry. The youngsters are angry that they've had their, um, you know, their, what they did on Saturday taken away from them. If on Exmoor you, you actually say, if the Labour government probably will do, we're going to even get rid of the exemption, so that'll be the end of stag hunting. What is the alternative for the deer? Greater concentrations, more TB, being shot, being poached. 
so I think you would have been better off keeping hunting. And I think you can have a similar thing with most things you look at. What happens if we don't do this? Will something worse take its place? Some dear old chap is probably my age or older, if could be, um, sitting, he's probably hunted all his life, he's known deer, but he goes up there and watches the deer. And that's all he's doing, watching. Then he tells his friends, there's one with a three atop, or one whatever, and, and um, that's what they do. And then they go other places. They know up the Bile Valley, the places where you see four or five cars always all watching. Yeah. Since I was you know, tiny, I've always been out on my pony, watching deer, Walk, I've walked miles, walked thousands of miles looking at deer, using my eyes, using my ears and learning their, the way they travel and where they live, where they were going to be with the weather. Um, it's just part, part of me. The government that tries to impose its will on Exmoor will have a fight on its hands. To buy Charlie's book, there's a link below. Thanks all who took part in that. Now from wildlife to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, brought to you by James Martington, it's Hunting YouTube. Here's my pick of the best hunting and shooting videos I've found on YouTube this week. First up, here's a comprehensive roundup of what's new at the SHOT Show in Las Vegas. Jim Harmer manages to cover just about every new product at the show, from Browning, Ruger, Christensen, Savage, Beretta, Tika, Seiko, and many more. Next up, Morton Schultz spends a couple of days hunting roe and fallow in Denmark in sub-zero temperatures in mid-January, with a driven hunt, stalking on foot, and waiting in a high seat. As if that wasn't challenging enough, Waypoint Survival is recreating what it was like hunting in freezing weather in the 1930s, before the invention of all the modern clothing and equipment we rely on today. Here's a look back to the recent game season. Jonathan McGee is out with Ben Husthwaite, who's coaching clients on the peg at the stunning Leighton Long Mountain shoot near Welshpool. With the game season over, Wash Wildfowler is getting stuck into the pigeons. The birds are hammering a crop of cauliflowers, and after a bit of a wobble with his shooting, he builds a decent bag. It's the time of year for squirrel control too, and the National Gamekeepers organization has made this film to explain to the wider public how and why they need to be cold. Meanwhile, Scotland's regional moorland groups have come out fighting against attacks on gamekeepers and the traditional rural way of life, with this moving film entitled Enough is Enough. Finally this week, I couldn't resist this bit of nonsense from a group calling themselves the Haggis Wildlife Foundation. Entitled The Scottish Haggis Hunt, a sustainable tradition, it appears to be narrated by David Attenborough, although I suspect AI may have played a part in that. Well, that's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you'd like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link jamesm at fieldsportschannel.tv. And that's it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please whiz over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, pop your email address into our register page, and we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's out 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday, and this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. <laughs>